In case you missed it, I'm building an app to keep track of budgets, all using Phoenix Live View. Make sure to start with the earlier episodes, or don't, that's up to you. Okay, last time we introduced the budget database model. It has a list view and a creation modal, some validation, and has visibility scope to the current user. My plan is to show a budget's transactions on a budget details view, but that doesn't exist yet. To get started, I'm gonna create a new live view called budget show live. In its mount method, we take in a parameter called budget ID. Then we can run tracking.getBudget with that ID to load it. When a budget's not found, we just push a redirect to the list view with a warning that the budget was not found. In its render, we'll show the budget's name and the name of the creator. Notice that the preload function that we used last time on a list transparently works on single instances of the schema and doesn't fail when there's a nil value. Over in our list view, Inside of the table, we can add a new column, and I'll just call it Actions, and it'll contain a link to that budget view. It's time to talk about this sigil P thing. In this example, it let me interpolate the instance of a schema module, the budget, and grabs the ID off of it. This is called Verified Routes, and it validates that a route exists at compile time. In fact, if I hover over this little error in my editor, it says that that route actually wasn't registered with the router, which is a great catch. We haven't done that yet. So if we go over to our router, we can register that live view by running live slash budget slash budget ID. And this string needs to match the parameter name over in our view, and then budget show live. Now, if I go over to the app and click this view button, I'll see the details of the budget. With some basic tests, we can confirm that this works. So I'll create a new test file. The first one makes sure that we show the budget when it exists. And the second one makes sure that we redirect to the budget list page when one doesn't exist. Let's run those tests. And they all succeed, no surprise. But I've also made a huge security mistake. Let me show you in another test. In this case, we create a budget as one user and then we sign in as another user. Remember that budgets should be isolated to only be visible by their creator. And yet, if I run this test, it fails. The live view didn't redirect us out of the details page. I can confirm this in app by directly navigating to another user's budget. Notice that I'm signed in as CA and yet I'm seeing a budget that was made by somebody else. This is an issue because we don't have any of that user scoping criteria found in the list function. If I go into budget show live, we're just taking the ID from the request and putting it directly into the module. So let's extract all of this query construction helper stuff into a private function called budget query. With that logic extracted, we can simplify list budgets and bring get budget in line. List budgets operates the same way as it did before. It's just that the query is being constructed in this private budget query function and get budget uses that same function and the same criteria concept and then passes the ID to repo.get to scope it down to a single item. Now over in our live view, we can swap out this call with a tracking.get budget. We'll pass in that user and we'll pass in the preload. And well, this page was redirected to budget not found because I had the page open with the budget that I didn't own. And if I run our tests, everything succeeds. But there's another surprising issue that comes with UUIDs in Phoenix. If I use a budget ID that isn't a properly formatted UUID, maybe the string test, the page crashes with a database error. It turns out Ecto is really strict with data types and doesn't have a way to insert a where clause into the underlying query, so it blows up. My preferred approach to this problem comes from a 2021 comment in a ghost town called Stack Overflow. In it, the original poster runs into the same issue, and one of the answers is to use a guard expression. In Elixir, we can define the same function multiple times with pattern matching. The first one that matches gets called. That's how, in create budget dialog, the handle event function works. Based on the pattern, we end up executing one of these. If the event is validate, then validate gets called. If the event is save, then save gets called. But at the end of the day, they have the same name and the same number of arguments. This pattern matching is really powerful stuff, and it's not just structural. We can also use what's called a guard expression. 
Guard expressions are a part of the pattern matching system built into Erlang and Elixir. They're typically used to articulate concepts like if this argument is a map, or if it's a list, or if it's nil. So this is UUID guard will only match if the argument is in the pattern of a UUID. So let's pull this helper into our project in a file that we will call guards.ex. There it is in all of its glory. Now we'll add it to the import in the live view macro in Budgie Web. Down in live view, in addition to importing live view and our HTML helpers, we're going to import our guards. Now in budget show live, we can add when is UUID ID to this expression. And if I try to go somewhere with a bad ID, now we're getting this error. No function clause is matching in mount. It's because we didn't have a mount that actually matched the string test. Then we can add a little fallback down here that will just redirect us away if there's an invalid ID. And there we go, budget not found. When I asked online, I got some other great ideas, mainly to move the guard or some other UUID checking function into the context module. As with most problems in software, there's many valid paths to a good outcome. Next time, we're gonna actually start tracking transactions. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.